It's coming up to four years since the initial release of Cyberpunk 2077, which turned out to be a total disaster at the time. It was supposed to be the biggest game of the year, hell it was supposed to be one of the biggest games of the last decade at the time of its release, but in the end the game was littered with bugs, the last gen consoles version was in fact so bad that Sony pulled it from sale on the PlayStation Store, and countless players ended up getting the game refunded shortly after beginning to play it. I believe one reviewer, I can't remember which publisher it was for, even had a seizure from playing it. There was a class action lawsuit filed over investor damages as a result of the false or misleading state of the game on last gen consoles, and you'd probably be hard pressed to find a major game that had a worse launch than Cyberpunk, to be quite honest with you. But now, nearly four years later in 2024, after multiple major updates and added DLC, is Cyberpunk finally worth getting stuck into? Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and find out. Just a heads up folks, all of this footage was captured on the PlayStation 5 and this video contains absolutely no spoilers for either the main Cyberpunk story or the Phantom Liberty DLC. I'll start with a very brief overview of the Cyberpunk world itself. Basically, this is a first person role playing action game based on the Cyberpunk universe from Mike Pondsmith and you play as V, either male or female, who just so happens to be a freelance mercenary trying to make a name for themselves in Night City, which could be described as a futuristic Los Angeles. You get to select an origin story from a few options and it will ultimately affect the beginning of the game for you in a couple of different ways. The world you'll get to explore can be described as a semi-apocalyptic world with massive corporations at the top controlling absolutely everything and everyone. Technology is running rampant through all aspects of life, and the citizens you'll come across are just trying to make a living as best they can in this cold and mechanical world. From a gameplay perspective, Cyberpunk is primarily a first person shooter, though you can probably get through the game without firing a gun if you fancied a bit of a challenge. And combat itself is fast paced and you'll have an abundance of melee weapons, guns, tech and other abilities at your disposal to force your way through some enemies. The game also makes use of quick hacks similar to those you can find in the Watchdog games and these can be upgraded as you progress throughout the game and level up. Speaking of leveling up, as you do so you can assign attribute points to a number of areas depending on your playstyle preference and you can upgrade your body at the same time, more on that in just a few minutes. There is a main story of course that you can follow, and to go with it there are an abundance of in-depth side quests and smaller gigs which you'll probably find yourself getting stuck into right from the off. And I would recommend doing just that because they are nicely varied, offer something different each time and ultimately give you a proper insight into the goings on in Night City. So what are the good parts about the gameplay? Well for starters, Night City and the surrounding area is absolutely stunning with a seriously impressive attention to detail especially in the city centre. Contrary to its initial release, the city feels alive and there is something interesting going on around every corner. Each area of the city looks unique and there is a much better vertical aspect to it than other cities you'll come across in other games as they tend to be a little more, well flat. Night City has a load of tunnels, highways, streets, crossing over one another, skyways, multi-floor apartment buildings that you can explore, and so on. As I said, the attention to detail is astounding. AAA games these days are definitely guilty of making their open worlds far too big with not much packed into them. Whereas CD Projekt Red have gone the other way, with Cyberpunk creating a game with a smaller than usual map but significantly more dense. I'm all for it personally. There is a fast travel system in the game but I didn't really use it at all because I'd rather make my own way to my markers more often than not, I'll end up going off exploring somewhere else en route and find something else interesting to do either way. In terms of customization, you can level up V in a number of ways depending on your playstyle. There are five major attributes. Body, Reflex, Intelligence, Technical and Cool, all with their own in-depth perk tree so you can decide to go down one route over another or take a more general approach and level each one up evenly, similar to what I'm doing on my most recent playthrough just to see how it works. In terms of weapon customization, I've certainly come across more in-depth examples in the past when comparing to Cyberpunk, but that's not to say it doesn't hold its own against 
other titles such as Fallout, Call of Duty, and I don't know, say Destiny. You can add attachments and mods to your weapons and also level them up, but that's about as far as it goes. There's no real scope for customising their appearance beyond that, but that's fine for me, I don't tend to get too bogged down in that stuff anyway. You can also upgrade your entire body cyberware at Ripper Docks throughout the city to enhance your abilities even further. And this is a pretty cool and in-depth feature. You can add mods to various parts of your body such as frontal cortex, immune system, skeleton and say nervous system. It's something totally unique compared to other games and definitely worth your time to level yourself up to make combat even easier. And speaking of combat, the combat in Cyberpunk is pretty fast paced, intense, not overly difficult but a great load of fun nonetheless. There are opportunities in some various quests and side quests to tailor your approach. So, say, you can go all in guns blazing and rip everything apart, which is what I like to do from time to time. Or sometimes you can decide to take a more conservative approach and sneak through the rooms full of NPCs out to kill you. You look at tutorials on doing both of these right at the beginning of the game. And you can tailor the attributes I mentioned earlier when leveling up to benefit either of these approaches as well, so it really does work well in allowing you to take a variety of different methods depending on the situation or just depending on which one you prefer. Of course there are some flip sides to those good things about the game, not as many I must admit but there are still some, and most of them are nitpicks to be honest, but the first one up for me is driving. But more specifically driving cars because driving motorbikes in cyberpunk feels great. Now it's not to say that driving cars in the game is bad, it just doesn't feel quite right to me. Something is slightly off about it. It felt far too easy for the car to fishtail or the camera to be off. But I think once I got my first motorbike I didn't really use cars that much again. I, I mean I found a really nice fast one, um, go exploring in it, but for me driving isn't great. However, driving on motorcycles is. So get a bike guys, much more fun. Now I'm a serious lover of the Grand Theft Auto games and in those you can do all sorts of things aside from the main or side quests. So like I'm talking about things like bowling, golf, gambling, whatever else you want to do at the time, but Cyberpunk doesn't really have much of that going on. Like I know this is a nitpick of mine, but I enjoy doing stuff like that just when I'm exploring the world. Like, I can play hours upon hours of Gwent in The Witcher 3 or Poker in Red Dead Redemption, for example. I feel like Night City should have some more things like that. But hey, I can't complain when on the whole, the rest of Night City is absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, there is money in the game, but it doesn't feel as important as it does in other games. I never really went out of my way too much to buy things because it just doesn't seem necessary. Like, I didn't go around buying cars, even though there's a great choice of cars that you can buy. I didn't go around buying clothes, weapons, or anything else like that, because I came across pretty much everything I actually needed whilst doing quests and looting the bodies of the NPCs who got in my way. Again, mainly just a nitpick, but something I figured I should mention anyway. Before I move on to a brief spoiler free review of the story and a brief overview of Phantom Liberty DLC, I'm sure you're all interested to know just how well or not so well the game performs these days, because that was a deal breaker for so many people, in fact even Sony because the game was in a shit state come release. But as I said, I play Cyberpunk on the PlayStation 5 and I've probably put around 180 hours into the game in two and a half playthroughs in that time. I think the game has only crashed on me once, maybe twice, I think that's it. Fallout 4 for a comparison since it had its next update has crashed on me about four or five times in the last six months, so it's certainly performing better than that. And As for gameplay bugs, I've barely seen any, though saying that I did manage to record one as I was getting footage for this video, so here it is. I was falling through a building, somehow, and it caused me to flatline, which isn't ideal. 
But for the most part, even in major combat situations, the game has performed very well and bugs have been very few and far between. So I think I can confidently say the vast majority of gameplay bugs and performance issues have now been resolved, at least on the PlayStation 5. So you can rest assured that if you're on the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X or PC, this game will perform admirably. There will be no story spoilers here as I mentioned, but overall I thoroughly enjoyed the story in Cyberpunk and you can in fact have multiple beginnings and multiple endings which makes you want to go through it all again once you've finished. It, is it the best story I've ever played in a single player game? No. Is it better than the stories of the majority of other AAA games these days? Hell yeah it is. You can blow through the main story in, I don't know, about 20 hours if you avoid all of the side quests along the way. Which I would highly advise against doing because the side quests are better than some of the main quests and not to mention you'll come across a whole host of interesting characters ranging from people you interact with just the once to almost companion level characters who you'll see quite a lot, assuming you take up their side quests of course, which I would recommend doing. Completing some of these side quests will also affect the ending of the game because of the relationships you will make along the way. So just because you can complete the main story in 20 hours, roughly, doesn't mean you should. I've completed the game twice with a different ending and a different beginning both times, and each playthrough took me around 60 to 70 hours because I really enjoyed going and doing those different side quests. I'm currently going through the game a third time now, which is where this footage is coming from. And trust me folks, the game remains just as good on each playthrough. Now of course there is a significant DLC called Phantom Liberty. And I won't go into too much detail about that DLC because the likelihood is you've not played the main game if you're watching this video. But I think it needs a quick mention anyway because it is probably one of the best DLCs I have ever played for a game. The main story is great, there is a new map to explore, the side quests feel even more substantial than the main game and give you more choice on how to approach them, not to mention the new characters you're introduced to are great as well. So yeah, overall an amazing DLC. Now going back to its absolutely disastrous launch, Cyberpunk has come a long way and even though they fecked up initially, CD Projekt Red do deserve some recognition for fixing the game and making it what it is today, as well as adding that truly amazing DLC for it. I mean, why game studios can't just get the game finished before releasing is beyond me. It happens far too often these days, but here we are. Just the fecking guys up top forcing them out before they're ready, basically, innit? Don't get angry at the devs, it's not their fault, basically. Now, if you haven't figured out by this point, my verdict would be yes. You absolutely should play Cyberpunk 2077 if you haven't done so already. The game is absolutely amazing. Night City is one of, if not the most immersive cities I've ever had the pleasure of exploring in a video game. The storyline is great and it can have multiple endings depending on your choices. And on top of that, it has some truly awesome characters, world building and in-depth side quests to go with it. And you can find yourself easily spending over 100 hours in this game in a single playthrough and not get bored whilst you're doing it, even for a second. Even though the gameplay is pretty combat heavy, it is great fun and still a challenge, assuming you're playing on a higher difficulty setting. If you like the overall cyberpunk aesthetic, no game has done it better or will do it better for a number of years in my opinion. You can easily pick up a copy of cyberpunk cheaper these days now it's been out for a number of years and I would highly recommend you try it out if you're able to do so. You definitely will not be disappointed. Anyway, there you have it folks. There is my verdict on whether or not Cyberpunk 2077 is worth playing in 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you a good insight into the game. Anyway, if you're still here, it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can now become a channel member as well and as always, thank you for watching this video and I hope to catch you in the next one.